So guys, we are finally, yes, finally doing the software aspect of our ultimate AMD build guide. We showed you the hardware building, we showed you the cable management aspect of this machine, and now I'm finally going to show you once you've built your machine, and it's been sitting on your floor for a couple months while you wait for Linus to show you how to install Windows and all your drivers and set up the BIOS. Now you can finally get your system running. We've made one small change to the configuration because we do want it to be the ultimate AMD machine. And we have put in a Radeon HD 6990 instead of the card we had before. So we've still got our 1100T overclocked 6-core processor. We've got our... 6990 dual graphics video card on our Crosshair 4 Formula motherboard, still a rockin' machine, but now it has a slightly more up-to-date video card to go along with everything else that is totally kick butt about this system. We also have one thing that makes our setup a little bit more complicated, and that is that we have dual SSDs in RAID 0. So you can see here, this is the first step. We're going to go right into the BIOS right away, pressing delete. The first step is never ever close your side panel. And I'm going to turn this back because you could see the cameraman in it before. Never ever close your side panel before you make sure the system posts because I guarantee you if you do it, something will be wrong and you will have to open it back up. That's just how it works. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in here is we are going to go into our boot selection. So when we first boot up the system, we are going to need to tell it, well, we want to boot from the CD-ROM because that way we are going to install our Windows OS rather than booting over to the hard drive. Another thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to go into our hard disk drives and we're going to have to configure which one is the default. So you want to set your first drive as whichever one you're going to have your OS on, and then your second and third, fourth, fifth, sixth, however many drives you have, for storage, you want to configure those as the other ones. However, you see right here, we've got our two Corsair SSDs. That's not what we want. We want to configure these two Corsair SSDs in RAID 0. So we actually need to go into our onboard device configuration, our onboard ATA controller ROM. Okay, that's enabled. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. We need to go into the, here, storage configuration under main. It's in slightly different places depending which brand of board you're using. And we need to go for our on-chip SATA ports one to four. We are going to set all of our SATA ports to RAID mode. And that is going to allow us to save configuration changes and exit now to set up these drives in RAID zero before we go any further. So we press Control F to get into the RAID BIOS setup. So this is allowing us to configure the onboard RAID controller. So the first thing we're going to do is we can view our drive assignments in here. We can see that both of these are set up as single disks. So that's not what we want. We actually want to LD view and LD define. Okay, so we're going to press Control C to define. And then we are going to set it up as a RAID 0. Yes. We are going to use a 64 kilobyte stripe. Fast initialization, okay, gigabyte boundary, and cache mode. We can actually change that value with page up and page down. No, we can't. We can change it with space. And we can't change that option. Cool. So we are going to set this up by changing these values to yes. We now have two drives assigned to our RAID 0. That is exactly what we want. We're going to press Control Y. That will save and we will enter a name. Actually, I don't really care about the name. Actually, okay, we'll call it uh, Force because that's the SSDs we're using. Press enter and yes, it will erase everything on these drives. That's fine. Remember, you can't set up RAID for your OS drive without completely wiping everything that is on the drives already. So now we have an 80 gig RAID 0 and that's where we're going to install our OS. All right, so one restart later, I've thrown my Windows 7 Home Premium disk into the drive because I already set up my boot order before I configured my RAID. I don't need to change anything. Boom. It is already loading Windows from the CD without any prompting whatsoever from me. Windows setup has gotten so easy these days. Basically, all we do is click Next and Install Now. Setup will begin to start. Now, there's one thing other than just entering our name and clicking through all the menus that we will have to do. Aha! A required 
device driver is missing. If you have a driver, floppy disk, CD, DVD, or USB flash drive, please insert it now. So there's a few different ways to do this. We're gonna take the CD that was included with our motherboard, pop it in the drive, and I'll show you guys what to do next. Okay, so I put the disk in the drive, I click browse, and it's not here. Hmm. See, I was just yanking your chain, guys. I'm not using the disc. I downloaded the latest RAID drivers off of the ASUS website for this particular card, loaded them on a USB stick, and here we are navigating to the correct folder, which is a, uh, RAID Windows 7 X64, because I am using 64-bit Windows. I click Next, and once those drivers install, we should be able to pick up on the RAID array that we have installed in our system. So now we gotta accept some license terms after carefully reading them, of course. We're going to select a custom install because if we use the upgrade install, then we better have a copy of Windows Vista already on our machine. You can see here our disk is now detected at 72.6 gigabytes of space. This is normal. I know we have two 40 gig drives in there, but after formatting, they actually are smaller than the raw capacity of the drive, plus the way that Windows reports drive capacities is a little bit different from the way the drive manufacturers measure them. So we're gonna click next, and that was it. Here we go. <laughs> so guys, we are now booted into Windows 7, where I'm gonna set this up as an AMD PC, okay? I'm gonna not create a password because I don't care. And here's a cool thing about Windows 7, which I always do, is I do not enter a product key right away. So I just click next and off I go. I use the recommended settings. The reason for that is because this gives me time to get all my drivers configured, get everything set up the way I like it, and then enter my product key and activate Windows. That means that if I screw up and I manage to corrupt my OS before I've even gotten started, which I've done on a number of occasions, that I can just go back and reinstall and I haven't used up one of my activations so then I don't have to call the Microsoft Activation Center in order to get them to do it. Okay, so here we are, we're at the Windows desktop. It was that simple. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that I do not have a LAN connection. And the reason for that is because I did not think of it before I started this shot. So I'm gonna have to uh, fish this cable out and that's not quite gonna work just yet. So now you guys are going to find the one true exception to my rule about throwing away the driver CD, and that's this. No connections are available. That means Windows 7 did not come preloaded with the Ethernet drivers that I need to connect to the internet and download the latest drivers. So we're gonna go into the device manager where we can see that there are a number of devices here that we do have to load drivers for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that motherboard driver disk. We are going to go update the driver software, Browse for it, we're gonna browse in my computer. We're gonna go to the drive, we're gonna find drivers. And we're going to find LAN, we're gonna go to Windows. See, you can see it takes a little while to do this. I mean, it's often actually quicker to just download the latest from the uh, manufacturer website. So here, we can install our Ethernet drivers, then we're able to get all the latest ones off of the individual manufacturer's websites. In this case, uh, we'll be downloading it from ASUS, as well as directly from AMD for our graphics card, because that way we will be covering all of these bases. So we're at ASUS.com, we're gonna go to the ASUS support site, and from there, it's actually pretty simple. We download product BIOS drivers, we're using a crosshair, whoops, we're using a Crosshair 4 formula. So we'll go ahead, throw that in there. We go to the formula. Here we can just select the OS we're running, which is Windows 7 64-bit. And now it gives us these options for things to download. So we can see in the device manager here, the things we need drivers for now, uh, looks like that other thing managed to update itself through Windows Update. Uh, we still need drivers for our USB controller. So USB 2 is included in Windows, so that's gonna be USB 3, as well as our video controller. So the only thing we need from ASUS 
I mean, we can update all of them to the latest drivers, including the audio, which was pre-installed for us, as well as the LAN, which we already installed, but it might be a bit of a hassle, and we don't necessarily have to do it. So let's download from the global, C4RWS, and then once that's downloaded, we can go ahead and install it. Installing Flash Reader. And it looks like apparently not having Flash installed broke my attempt to download this. So we're going to try one more time here. Crosshair 4 Formula, Windows 7 64 bit, search, USB, and global, and FVRPG. Aha, open. There we go. So that'll take a couple minutes to download. So now we're into the USB 3 driver, we're running the setup, this is for an NEC controller. Big fan of the NEC controller for USB 3 because it doesn't cause my, uh, my external USB 3 hard drive to randomly disconnect like one of the other ones does, I won't say who. Uh, it's one of the newer ones though, I believe it's a 4 port controller. So there we go, we've installed that, finish. So now the USB 3 controller is here under Universal Serial Bus Controllers instead of under other devices. And now finally, all that's left to do to get our computer up and running is go to amd.com. We're going to go to the driver downloads, which is over here. Component category is going to be desktop graphics, product line, HD series. It's really good to know exactly what you've got in your system before you try and download drivers, although there are tricks to finding out what's in there. Um, here we are. If you don't know exactly, still, I would definitely recommend, you know, checking the user manual for your system or checking the uh, documentation that comes with whatever components you happen to be using to make sure you're downloading the right things. Okay, so now we're installing our AMD software suite which only takes a couple of minutes. This is actually the last driver, according to Device Manager, left to install to get full functionality of our system. Don't forget that we also did configure Windows Update to, do, 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 here it is, Windows Update to automatically install updates, so it looks like we're waiting for a restart. Once we've installed our, AT, our hmm, AMD Radeon drivers, then we will have everything ready to go. We'll restart the system one more time and then I'll show you guys some of the utilities that I use to make sure that a new system is functioning 100%. So here are some very basic utilities that you can use to validate if everything's working properly. There's the obvious stuff like plugging things into all the different ports and making sure that they all actually detect stuff like your audio ports, your front USB, all that good stuff. But here's a few things that you can do to make sure everything's on the up and up. So Prime95. Right now I'm running it with the torture test, running small FFTs, so that's going to test your CPU but doesn't really stress your RAM very much. So I would run that for at least 12 hours to ensure that the, everything is stable, especially if you're running an overclock the way I am. So I've actually got this computer at 3.84 gigahertz on the Phenom 2 X6 1100T that I'm running. So that's uh, a very good way to validate an overclock over here. You can see I'm checking all of the information, making sure all of my cores are detected, all of my threads are detected, all of that good stuff, and everything is functioning correctly there. Now to make sure my memory is working properly, stay there. Oh, cameraman, don't move, go back. Yep, there. I can check my memory tab where I can see that my memory is running at the frequency that I have selected for it here. All of my memory is being detected. I have four gigs in this machine. And then in order to test my memory, you can come back over to Prime95. What I typically do to make life easy for myself is I click Blend, which will set all of the blend options. Then I go to Custom, which leaves the blend options. And I'll put nearly my entire amount of memory into the memory to use and click OK. I'm not going to do it now. It slows the system down to a crawl, but that's going to really heat up your memory and and, uh, and test to make sure that it is working correctly. I'd run that one again for at least 12 hours. Last but not least, I always find something from the 3D Mark series, maybe loop it overnight. The reason I like 3D Mark 06 uh, or some of the older ones is that they do allow you to run them over and over again more easily without uh, uh, signing into the online uh, results browser and all that stuff. So we've got a 6990 in here. Obviously, the FPS is. Uh, pretty good on this particular older benchmark. But thank you for checking out the software 
side of our PC setup guide. I hope you've enjoyed this three-part series. If you haven't already seen the hardware build guide as well as the cable management guide, do check those out. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more computer videos, how-tos, guides, tutorials, and all that good stuff.